Hey, thanks for downloading the show. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. I call it eclectic DIY. The motto here is done is better than perfect. Today we're going to talk about getting a uh, energy audit of your home and insulating afterward. And then we're going to talk about painting outdoor fences with my friend Nicole. Hey. Hey, happy to be here. Yay. It's the middle of the day. We're recording this. So um, we're caffeinated properly. We're hydrated properly. I would say we're at like mid-level energy, post-lunch. Perfect. Yeah, I agree. So we have both we have both had what is basically called an energy audit or a house energy out audit. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I think so. And Home my, energy audit, yeah. My experience was it's it's sponsored by the electrical company, your electrical provider, but in the fine print at the bottom, it does say this service is paid for by uh, our electrical customers. And they came and they took a blower. It's, I think it's called a blower thing. And they put it in the front door. They turned it on. They closed all the other doors and windows. And they had some gauges on it. And they figured out how much air was coming through all the cracks and holes in my house. Then they did some preliminary insulation with spray foam and uh, insulating the doors with, uh, weather stripping the doors with, they call it V, V sill. It's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a weather stripping in the form of a V. Mm -hmm. And then they put together a uh, proposal for their company to insulate the whole house and it was about uh, $9,000 to do it. And our cost after the subsidy from the electric company would be 2500 Yeah. And that that's really impressive. And it basically consists of blow-in insulation in the attic, blow-in in cellulose insulation in the walls. And then between the basement and the first floor would be fiberglass insulation because they don't consider the basement part of the heating envelope of your house really yeah so we're we decided to go forward with that there's some stuff we have to do ahead of time you also have to think about um we have an older home that has clabbered on the outside so they will be having to lift off pieces of clabbered and then drilling holes in the sheathing circles essentially to pump the cellulose in um, in some of the house, they're going to do it from the inside. They're going to drill round holes in the drywall and blow it in because the house, there's part of the house that's just too high to safely access without like okay. a, a cherry picker or a, or a person lift. So, and yeah, huh. so it's, it's kind of the tip of the iceberg of, I mean, this house I know has leaked like crazy forever. It was built in 1949 when heating oil was about two cents a gallon so well uh, so when they came and did that to our house i was just looking for our energy audit i found the the exterior one that i'll talk about but um it seemed a little clownish the way they do this test because i'm like well how accurate could this be because they're trying to measure the pressure they're trying to pressurize your home and see how much um heat or air conditioning is coming out of the sides of the house. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it just, I remember being like, is this very accurate? <laughs> uh, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, every house could use some more insulation. I feel like. Yeah, they, I, I mean, I've kind of done a deep dive on, on insulation. Cause I, I want to spray foam the whole house. <laughs> And they were like, well, it's a lot of money and this is a a little simpler and gets a a similar R value. And um, so I I guess I don't know. I thought that's what you were getting. So this is different than spray foam. Right. This is pack cellulose. Right. It's it's shredded paper. Oh, basically. Is is it treated with something? It's treated with uh, sticky glue so it doesn't all settle in the wall joist. So the wall joist space, you know, you've got a wall of essentially two by fours that go up and down. And then you have 
be- every 16 inches, you have this space between the sheetrock and the outside wall, or drywall on each outside wall. And they fill it with cellulose. And, but when they first started doing that, they discovered that all these shredded paper would settle in the bottom of the wall. So the top half of the wall didn't have any insulation. Now they have a, they have a, a product that doesn't settle. It sticks to, it's kind of like spraying rubber cement all over the cellulose in the wall. I mean, it already has sticky stuff on it when it blows in, then it keeps its, it keeps its uh, dimension. I don't know if the right word, but. Well, so my concern always is mice and rats. Right. So um, they must do something to make it not appealing to those animals. I don't know. I don't know. Huh. Well, I do know that the spray foam is much more expensive. My A buddy of mine just had his attic spray foamed. And it was nine thousand dollars just for the attic. Well, didn't Will say that he spray foamed him something himself? <laughs> yes, they have DIY kits. Um, okay. They are really quite expensive. They're based on board feet, um, basically square footage. What it basically means is if it's called like the the foam pack seven ten, it does seven hundred and ten square feet at one inch of foam. So so you're spraying a one inch thick foam layer over 710 square feet. I'm making up the number, but um, there is one area of my house in the root cellar where I'm going to do the spray foam and I'll make a video about it. And it's going to be about $250 just for like a 12 by 12 area to do that. But I'm going to augment that to to really geek out here on insulation is um, it's we have a side porch that has its own basement. It's a cinder block basement with a little door to the main basement. And you walk into this little root cellar basement and you can see the floor joists of the porch, right? Okay. So I, I'm going to take cast off. I have a ton of inch and a half or two inch polystyrene insulation from various projects. I'm going to glue or screw all that into the joist spaces. And then I'm going to spray foam on top of that. So I'm essentially sealing in the it's like styrofoam polystyrene yeah mm-hmm. so i've got an r value of maybe starting at 10 and then i'm going to put the spray foam on top so that gives me another r of five or something and i ran it by the insulation audit guy and he said yeah that's a good way to do that so hoarding all that polystyrene has paid off <laughs> yes i knew that was where we were going with this <laughs> <laughs> but you can go by a construction site and when they're in the you know in the dumpster you can pull out cutoffs of polystyrene they also have kind of a styrofoam that has silvery paper on both sides that works as well and if you if you collect enough of that you could i actually shot a video which i have to edit about insulating the mud sill of my house because that is exposed basically all that's between that and the outside is a two by ten yeah so yeah i'm I'm a spray foam i have spray foam all over most of my work clothes and you can't get it now off. the those kids that i follow in um scotland that i talk about all the time what have we done in they're using they got special wool to to insulate with and yes. apparently wool is naturally repellent to mice and waterproof yeah it has lanolin in it that's fascinating huh so but obviously that's way more expensive i'm assuming I don't know. Um, I know the cellulose is the low is the lowest expense one, and I think for for this house and the money we have, it, it worked out well. It's perfect. So okay, and then it's just going to take them three days to do it. Yeah, I think it'll take them less. I think they I think they uh, pad that a little bit just to kind of warn you. Okay. Okay. And do you guys have to be there when they do it, or you probably want to be there? I'll want to be here. I'm. I don't think you have to be, but I'm just, I don't, I I don't really like people working on my house anyway, (laughs) so, (laughs) because I think I can do it all. Yes, the camera operator mentioned that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) If you're curious about what's going on in Eric's brain, maybe consider becoming a patron of the show. Uh, Every week I post between one and 10, depending on what I'm doing with the app. Just photos and thoughts and what I'm working on kind of stuff. Also, the after show, which is basically the third part, the third half 
of the regular Garden Fork Radio podcast. So think about that. Cup of coffee a month, a lot of Eric. You might not want that, or you might, or you just want to like buy me a cup of coffee a month. That would really be cool. Appreciate that. Information is below and at patreon.com slash Garden Fork. Thank you. So DC has two programs. One is to help insulate the inside of your home, and the other is to help uh, with rainwater runoff um, because we're trying to preserve the two rivers that uh, sit that DC sits between um, the Potomac and the Anacostia. And so the the rainwater collection was amazing. So you can get from the city. They come and they do an analysis of your yard. Um, they're willing to pull up your parking pad and put down, um, pervious pavers, uh, for you. Wow. They would really like you to do that. Um, then they will change your sidewalks from concrete to pervious paper pavers. And then we ended up saying no, cause the concrete had just been poured and I wasn't going <laughs> to pull up something that was just, had just been happened. But, um, they would have given us rain barrels. Now I didn't like the colors of the rain barrels, so I didn't <laughs> I didn't get a rain barrel. Um, they were brown and green. Uh, I guess I could have spray painted it. But anyway, so we don't have the rain barrels. But we did do the bayscaping. And they will bayscape part of your yard um, and put in natives wow. to uh, help reduce uh, runoff. Um, and so we did that probably like seven years ago. Of the plants that were originally put down i would say probably five of them made it <laughs> uh but now two of them are big bushes you know they're doing their thing so uh, bayscaping is to save the bay is that what that's all about yeah or? i think that's what the yeah 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 and um but i think that would have been like you know five thousand dollars to have done but they you know they paid for that i feel like there was one other water thing oh yeah we got free trees so we got, I got to pick out two free trees um, nice. and we got a bur oak because I love the um, acorns on bur oaks. They're gigantic. They look like prehistoric. They're, they're really big. Um, but the squirrels always eat them before I get to have them. Oh. And then um, we got a, a red, a red bud, which is kind of generic, but for the spot where I put it, it, it worked really well. No, it's perfect. It's a tree. Yeah. Provides totally. shade. It's a tree cools the earth now we do have in the front yard we just uh i just cut down in stages a tree uh we had a dogwood that died and this dogwood was beautiful it was like we have a corner lot and it was right up there in the front really neat tree with like five branches that went off or i don't know that's not the right word but the boys could climb on them right so it was a great climbing tree and then it died and so I just had the stump removal guy come and remove my stump. Yeah, they have a great machine. Yeah. It was hard to find him, uh, but it's his email is, or his phone number is like 1-800-MY-STUMP or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he came, I think I paid him 250 bucks. And uh, that was, again, like I cut down the tree myself, which I was pretty proud of. Yeah. But uh and he, then, of course, he, the guy made fun of me for cutting down his tree because he had a lady who did that and, like, got impaled. I'm like, well, uh, I'm not an idiot. Like, I know how to cut it. I'm from Montana. Yeah. So, <laughs> cut a tree down. Anyway, we had to do it in stages because one of my sons was very attached to the tree and was really sad about it. Oh, wow. So, for a while, I just had, like, <laughs> this dead tree with one branch. Anyway, so, I got that down and then he came into the stump. Um but where was I going with that? Oh, they're going to give me another free tree. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And that's the electric company. Uh, kind of like your, uh, yeah, your I mean, system they're, here. They're, I don't know if part of this is like state and federal mandates. Uh, a friend of mine who works kind of sort of in the energy sector said that uh, electrical utilities don't want to build new power plants they're very expensive so um they would rather get you to conserve and just slowly raise the price on you <laughs> <laughs> like we're in a boiling pot of water yes basically <laughs> but um uh, similar to i already said this to eric but 
you should always check if your city or your state has any of the inc these incentives because similar to your extension service for soil testing, a lot of cities and states have these programs. Yeah, no one in my town really seems to know about this insulation program that I did. And they're like, what? And I'm like, you know, it's for the energy audit, it's 50 bucks. And I was like, well, that's just, that's some smart money right there. And then they, they did some simple weather stripping, which helped greatly. And then they did some spray foaming with um, a little, it's not a little, but it's a stainless steel, like spray foam gun. And these uh, it looked like oversized spray cans. And they ba mainly did it in the basement, just sealed up uh, where you could see a little bit of daylight or something. And they seem, I mean, they've done this enough that they know what they're doing. And, oh, it's called V-Seal is the weather stripping they used on the different doors. And it, it, that was, uh, I, it, it knocked the number down like 15% just by spending an hour doing this. Okay, well, you had the video of you trying to do the weather stripping. So how did they figure it out? Did they have skinnier stripping or something? And they had much higher quality weather stripping. and um, But that door is now is quite hard to close. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but it doesn't leak air anymore. <laughs> huh, interesting. So um, they, they called it Schlag V-Seal. So... Um, schlag like the key company i think yeah so I, have to look, I have to look that up and see if you can buy it because it's it's much better than the cheap weather stripping v-steel stuff you can buy at at the home improvement store all right well i definitely want to get that because i've got two doors that um you know our house was flipped and so eight years now that some of the stuff is starting to fail and it 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 you know it just makes such a difference just like if we were, I was playing with the puppies and I was on the kitchen floor right next to the kitchen door, which is in that video. And I could just feel the cold air rolling in under the door, you know? And I was just like, oh, I'm, I need to fix this. Cause you, otherwise <laughs> you're, you're standing up. You never so, feel it. And you don't feel it. Yeah, totally. So we have a up. crawl space under our kitchen and I've tried to get people to come out to seal it because it's open ground. Yeah. Nobody wants to get in there and seal it. <laughs> but no. I'm wondering if I should circle back to the city to see if, like, we had an, inter an like a new energy audit. <laughs> Tell me what to, to do ask. about this, right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's a forward-thinking city, you know? Right. Um, and I'd also like to get... Uh, we don't have high radon. We have, like, mid-level radon. Yep. Yeah. We're not really in the basement, but I would like to get that remediated and finding a radon person has proved to be because I think it's not bad enough that they're just like, oh, it, it's fine. Like, well, you know, you can DIY that thing. Can you? You basically you cut a hole in your floor, your cement floor. You stick some gravel in there with a PVC pipe uh, and then an inline fan and then you vent it out the top of your house. It is not hard to do. The hardest part is opening up the cement floor and you go rent a jack. You can rent a 120 volt, you know, plug in jackhammer. And then you, you know, you buy a bag of cement to seal it up around the PVC. And what, what it's basically doing is it's creating a negative atmosphere underneath the slab of your basement. And so the radon goes toward the vacuums, the vacuum created by the fan and out the top of your house rather than slowly leaking in around the cracks of the foundation itself. Now, can you vent it to, if you, can you just vent it out the side of the house or do you have to go up through the top? I'm not sure. It depends on the county or town or state. Um, okay. In New York, I'm pretty sure you have to go through, I don't think it's the top of the house. It, it can go, you know, you can, it can go through the back roof of a house, but I think the PVC has to go all the way up to the ridge. So you won't see it from the front of the house, but I've seen them also come up the side of a house. I would just check, ask around locally. I'm sure there's someone online that knows the local code. Yes, of course. I, um, I think it's the familyhandyman.com that has an article about how to do that yourself. 
Uh, okay, so I'm going to send my husband to you when I go to rent the jackhammer. <laughs> it's really is. Jackhammers are great. You you just want to jackhammer out a circle. And it just, it it's basically a really heavy machine with a cement chisel. I would get the, they give you a set of chisels with it. One's pointy, one's kind of flat. I would use the pointy one. And you just cut out a circle. It's not going to be a perfect circle. And uh, the hardest part is getting rid of that cement, you know? <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, okay. All right, this is fascinating. All right, I don't know that. Changing out our HVAC, I feel like I could do. I'm not sure about this. But I'm going to watch some videos. You want to switch out your whole house air conditioner? Well, not yet. But once oh. it dies, I do think I want to, yeah. I watched a video online. I I would hire a professional for that because that's oh that's even one step too far. <laughs> I probably won't do it, yeah. but um, I did like the idea. That, like apparently most of them are, are proprietary, but there's one company that will sell them direct to consumers, and they come it comes with an installation manual and how to do it all. Um, but yeah, no, I mean let's be real here. I mean eventually we do want to switch away from the um, natural gas. Right. So that's, you know, that's still on the back burner, if you will, because on the front burner is painting the fence. Yay. Hey, real quick, if you would like to help support the show, one way is to use the Amazon link for Garden Fork. I said that backwards. The Garden Fork Amazon link. Uh, it's in the show notes here. It's amazon.com slash shop slash Garden Fork. If you use that link, It'll take you to our shopping page. We can see the cool tools I use, cookbooks. Uh, I have several lists there of stuff. But also, by visiting that page, then going doing all your shopping, we get a finder's fee for whatever you shop for that day. That's really helpful. Amazon.com slash shop slash garden fork. Thank you. So, full disclosure, I had talked to Eric about this, I don't know, a couple months ago. and was like, what do I do again? So I have completed step one, which is power wash the fence. So let's step back. So what kind of fence is it? So I have a white, we have a corner lot. I have a white picket fence and it goes all the way around the entire property. So right. we bought the house. They had painted it. They put one crappy layer on. A year later, I paid a couple of teenagers to just put another coat on. Yep. And so that lasted a while, and then, and then now it's done. <laughs> so, is I the need... paint cracking off? Oh yeah, the paint's cracking off. Yeah. So we power washed it. I feel like it's, it. I'm gonna, you know, run a maybe run sandpaper over just like, just to get anything else that's flaking. And then, okay, you told me to get the small rollers. Yep. And I'm going to buy three of them because the boys are going to help me paint yeah. the fence. And I'm going to pay them in screen time. Do you know what screen wow. time is, Eric? Yes, I know. <laughs> so an hour of painting is going to get them an hour of screen time. It's a one for right. one. So the, the posts, are the posts wood or metal? It's all wood. Okay. So I, what then, I would, I'm good. Yeah, go ahead. Me. No, you tell me. Well, after the power washing, um, you need to, someone needs to go over it with um, some sort of straight edge. Okay. Uh, you know, you could use what's called a five in one, which is a painting tool that has a, a, a sharp front edge on it or some sort of like a two inch scraper and knock okay. off all the loose, all the loose paint should, should okay. come off. You can all also right. try a wire brush. Wire brushes usually have a, the bigger ones have a, a metal scraper on the end that you can also knock off stuff. But the more, the more and better prep you do, the longer the paint will last and longer the fence will last then. Okay. And the, the biggest issue with fences is where they touch the soil because the, the posts will probably rot out before the fence, the decorative fence part does. Yeah, I've definitely noticed that too. Just, I mean, from the like um, weed whacker too. Yep. Yeah, weed whackers are not the post friend. 
So then, okay, you had given me advice too about what kind of paint to use. Yes, I would. I would use a outdoor. Um, it's it's a it's a two in one primer and top coat, but I would I would get a latex outdoor uh, one that has a built in primer, and I would buy the more expensive kind because you really do get what you pay for with. Paint. Okay. Your your upfront cost will be higher for the paint, but it will last more years. Okay. Don't cheap out on that. And so it doesn't matter where you go, right? You can go to a big box store. Or the Sherman Williams doesn't. Right at that price point, it doesn't matter. There's there is one paint I've used on a on a on some commercial jobs I did called Ball and something, and it was eighty dollars a gallon or ninety dollars a gallon, but it was phenomenal paint. <laughs> but Faro, it's outdoor... called Faro and Ball, and I have a story oh, okay. about that paint. <laughs> So during the pandemic, I was looking at a magazine and there was this beautiful, deep turquoise blue wall in this magazine. And I was like that. I want that color. I want that color on my wall. Every wall in our house is white. So I order, I call up the Faro and Ball store in Upper Northwest DC. And I say to the guy, listen, I want this special color. And he says, great, we can overnight that to you. I said, Ah. great. That's great. What are we talking? Uh, It was $90. And so he overnights it to me, and I get it, and the can comes, and it has a dent in the can, just a small dent. So I email the guy. I was like, hey, got the paint. It looks beautiful. You know, we're going to paint it up. Could I get a discount for the, <laughs> for the dent? And he says, no, Miss Harkin, let me. I will get you another one. I will send you another one. And indeed, another one sh- showed up the next day. Oh, they're all about customer service. They were amazing. So yeah. I painted two walls, the entryway wall and then a different another wall that you look at when you walk in. And then I'm driving along with Otis, my son, a couple months ago, a couple weeks later. And he's like real casual. Mom, is there any white paint in the house? And I was like, oh, I think we've got some white paint in the basement. What do you need? He's like, I'm painting the walls back. I want them to be white again. Uh. <laughs> but that project was fun because I used magnet paint a magnetic paint underneath so yep. the one wall is blue, but I have pictures all over it that are just, uh, they just have magnets on the back of them. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That turned out really nicely. That's like the uh, chalkboard paint. Exactly. I thought about doing both, but then I didn't. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so, but going back to the fence, it's the oh, prep yes. is, the prep is everything and the prep is drudgery. So you could uh, load up your phone full of the back catalog of Garden Fork Radio. Um, yes. Which you can get on Libsyn, which is on our, our that's where our server is. Uh, only the most recent hundred episodes is available in the, in most podcast players. Cause that's, that's what it's set to on Libsyn. But oh, yeah, interesting. prep, prep is everything. Whatever okay. works for you, whatever loosens the loose paint and gets it off. A wire wheel on a drill. If you're going to do that, please wear eye and uh, hand protection and a mask. You don't know if that fence is old enough to have lead paint, so be careful. Mm-hmm. You don't you don't want to huff um, lead dust, you know? Yeah, no, it's really a problem, uh, especially uh, in D.C. because we had lead pipes. Uh, my neighborhood is going through a thing where uh, they're replacing all of the lead pipes. Oh, Wow. It's a big undertaking. Yeah, we have a copper main. In the city, we have a copper main coming in. And here we have a well with, um, it's called Black Poly, which is a black plastic pipe. So I can't blame that for my uh, brain failing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I'm excited to circle back with you and let you know how it goes. This would be great. This yeah. would be great. If you all are experts in this, if you have a thought, uh, I would love to hear from you. It's radio at gardenfork.tv. And uh, if in the podcast app, you could leave a five-star review, that would be great as well. Any questions, radio at gardenfork.tv. Nicole and I are going to stick around for the after show for the patrons. If you're interested in supporting the show, there's information in the show notes here. All right. So thanks, Nicole. Thanks for your time. Yeah, this is great. Thanks. 
Garden Fork Radio is produced by Garden Fork Media LLC in Brooklyn, New York. Our producer is Sean O'Neill. If you need an amazing podcast producer, visit Sean's site, seaninbrooklyn.com. That's Sean, S-E-A-N, in brooklyn.com. Our executive producer is Jimmy Goose. For more information about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes, visit hollowbooks.com. The music in the show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Thank you.